Thanks for tuning in to another installment of Advanced TV Herstory, a podcast that analyzes shows and celebrates women of television. Thousands of comedies, variety shows, and dramas have aired, yet the presence of strong women, both in front of and behind the camera, is often a story untold. Well, Advanced TV Herstory begs to differ. There's so much more, and it's worth telling and retelling. Sometimes shows offer great leadership lessons or are so timeless in their writing that people say the series has aged well. We'll explore those shows further. We'll revisit moments in TV where women broke records, exceeded expectations, or put their careers on the line. Advanced TV history will connect the treasures of the past to the great potential of today's TV and online platforms and how it all plays a part in being a woman in America today. Tomorrow's success is rooted in understanding what has come before us. So gear up for a little storytelling and fun, sociology, fashion, economics, or strategy. It's all here in Advanced TV Herstory. I'm your host, Cynthia Bemis Abrams. An earlier installment of Advanced TV Herstory took us back to the first few seasons of that magnificent long-running medical drama ER. Specifically, we reviewed the characters of Nurse Carol Hathaway and Dr. Susan Lewis, and appropriately, we tipped our podcast hat to actresses Juliana Margulies and Sherry Stringfield for anchoring the show with two strong, competent portrayals. Fast forward a dozen years, and viewers were still tuning in to the drama inside County General every Thursday night. Nearly all the faces of the nurses and the doctors and the staff had changed, and in that final season, which was the 15th, and it aired in 2008-2009, modern healthcare delivery challenges were decidedly more complex than they had been in 1994. This segment of Advanced TV History celebrates the producer's decision to ride out the series with the incredibly talented Angela Bassett at the helm, as Dr. Kate Banfield. She made the 15th season well worth watching. Bassett is an actress who runs away with a role, usually on the big screen, so the pleasure was all ours to see her artistry each week, portraying a character as complex, tightly wired, and professional, well, as as we think Angela Bassett might be in real life. We'll probe the character, uh, Dr. Kate Banfield's, personal life, which unfortunately comes to affect her professional performance, and we'll review how the other lead characters complemented the aura she carried. By this last season, we had come to know the nurse-doctor relationship between John Stamos' character and Linda Cardellini's character. Actress Parminder Nagra as Dr. Neela Razgotra lived the career of a high-achieving, foreign-born, U.S.-trained physician who expected a lot of herself and others. Now, by the 15th season, remember, some pretty big names had worn ER scrubs or lab coats or hospital gowns. Early on, it was Margulies and George Clooney, and in those middle seasons, we often saw William H. Macy or Kelly Martin or Gloria Rubin, Sarah Gilbert, Marishka Hargitay, or Sally Field carrying the short or long-term story arcs of those mid-seasons. The 15th season was indeed peppered with cameo appearances and pop-ups from some of the most beloved characters of the past. And I think that that was an approach that was particularly effective in celebrating the show's longevity and tying up those final episodes. Behind the camera, a few episodes were directed by women, namely Leslie Linka Glatter, who went on to become the force behind Homeland, and Mimi Later. Women writers in the last season included Lisa Zwirling, Janine Sherman Baroy, Shannon Goss, and Karen Mazur. With a keen emphasis on the turnover of interns and the ER's role as a teaching unit, A new batch of medical students and doctors in training are introduced in the first few episodes of season 15, as is the newly appointed Chief of Emergency Medicine, Dr. Kate Banfield. Banfield's demeanor was all work. Unlike Dr. Carrie Weaver, Bassett's Banfield had a more decisive, accountable presence on the floor from day one, 
and that could have been a factor of age and experience, or it could have been that writers had consistently presented characters of color as fairly serious and driven, with high expectations of themselves. This goes all the way back to the first few seasons, as we watched Dr. Peter Benton strategize about his opportunities for advancement and acceptance. And also in this episode that we're profiling today, um, you get to see her. You get to hear her exchange with Dr. Archie Morris, who is played by Scott Grimes, and he served up levity throughout those final seasons um, in a very uh, charismatic way. So after the first few episodes of season 15, we saw Bassett as Banfield getting a chance to shine in the weekly realm of TV versus the concentrated performances she had brought us on the big screen. For instance, in 1994, for her portrayal as Tina Turner in the movie What's Love Got to Do With It, Bassett won a Golden Globe and was nominated for an Oscar. Her work is recognized with nominations and awards from a host of organizations that promote diversity. For her role as Dr. Kate Banfield, Bassett won an Image Award and was nominated for a BET Award as Best Actress. If you're not a stickler for watching a series in chronological order, buy ER Season 15 on DVD. The season was masterfully constructed and the series finale, which was much anticipated in the spring of 2009, you may recall, is a two-hour episode with a one-hour retrospective that preceded it. Plus, you get Bassett in 21 episodes at her very best. What more could you want? So yes, Dr. Kate Banfield, tense, smart, and her team respects her. How did she end up working in this ER? That question gets answered in an excellent must-see episode entitled Heal Thyself. It's as well-written and directed as it is acted. Bits of audio barely do it justice, but there's excellent perspective. It's a mother's perspective embedded in the storyline. And the complexity of the storyline was where the writers shone most brightly. Shortly into the start of the story, when Dr. Banfield, who was still a relatively unknown character to viewers, had an exchange with her husband and then bolted for a run along Lake Michigan. From that point, flashbacks intersperse with her day and construct two plots that parallel. So while burning up the running path along the lake, Banfield joined others in the rescue of a young girl who had just fallen into the lake. It was a cold, raw day. Banfield went into hero mode, no, not by jumping in to save her, but rather working on her in the ambulance that sped to County General. She flashed back some number of years, and the difference uh, for the viewer is that it's mainly found in how they had styled her hair and how she comes across in this first story as um, smiling effusively and just being a much uh, lighter character. This first is a scene that included her then five-year-old son, Daryl. Grandpa took her on a walk because she was acting fussy. Todo estaba bien, estaba feliz. Everything was good, she was happy. Y de repente, ya no la vi. And then the baby was just gone. Go deep. Go. Go, 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 go. Chase me. Nice pass. That's why they call it. A uh, Hail Mary. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't chase me. Because I'm the quarterback. Now, button hook. I'm tired. Oh, one more touchdown, then we get ice cream. Booker and Banfield. That's all the Bears are going to need this year. Woo! <laughs> the plan got to March. She has a pulse, so not much to do but one up right. Away. So, access, warm sailing, and get respiratory down here with the vent. Get the bear hugger and prep for intubation. I'll be right in. Hey. I have a favor to ask. Not now. I need your help getting an MRI. If it's an emergency indication, call the radiologist. It's not exactly an emergency, but it needs to happen today. I have a homeless vet, seizures, cognitive deficits, behavioral changes. Then you'll work it out. Well, I tried that, but they said they want him to come back as an outpatient, which is never going to happen. He's not an ER patient anymore? He's out of our hand. He's in Iraq. A war hero. Served in the same unit as I did back in Desert Storm. I get all Monica playing Dr. Gates, but work is work and the rest is irrelevant. Dr. Banfield, I get this whole tough boss thing and it works for you, it really does, but cut me some slack. I need your help. 
Dr. Banfield, the old ball and chain on line two. Thank you. Tell him I'm in with the patient, Frank. Competent nerves of steel. We know from the interactions of the Banfields that they are alone, that there are no children in their household. So these flashback scenes provided the vital background for the loyal viewer to finally understand Banfield's intensity. Get the tape up. Hello. You're the mom. Sandra Herrero, is my daughter okay? It's hard to know you. We're trying to warm her up now. She's very strong for her age. She's a good girl, very sweet. So, she'll be okay? The cold water may have protected her heart and brain. We're just waiting to see. Please, I know you know, so tell me. Is my baby going to be all right? Why can't you ever give a straight answer? (laughs) You want to have a baby? Another baby? Now? Well, not right now, but... (laughs) Excuse me, is is, is this your son? There's something wrong with him. Daryl? What? Daryl! Daryl! It's happening again. Okay. Well, should we call an ambulance? No, no, I'm adopted. It doesn't look good. He's burning up. It's just a febrile seizure. We should get him home and cool him down. Maybe we should be safe. It's just like last time. Look, stop it already. Are you sure? I've been doing this too long to make any promises, but I'll tell you this. Losing control is not going to help her, so if that's what you got to do, you do it outside. In here. You be the mom, you be calm, you put all your energy into helping your little girl fight back because that's what she needs. Can I? Can I go be with her now? As adults, we like to think of ourselves as learning pretty regularly from our mistakes. Dr. Banfield relived the actions and inactions which she led as her son's mother and as an emergency medicine physician, on this day when confronted with this patient, who is a young girl so close to death. That can't be. County only has two machines. One's in use, the other's out for repairs. Systolic's down to 44. Alicia needs a machine that'll warm her blood and do the work of our heart and lungs. We don't have that here, so we're going to have to transfer to another hospital. Move her. No, what? It's going to take hours for another hospital to accept her and then a transport team to yes, get her Yes, time out. is critical, so let's not waste it. Call transport. Go. The, 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 this girl's not stable enough. But let's increase internal rewarming, get the heart in better shape before we ship her out. She still has a pulse in BP. Now is our window. Dr. Banfield, she's here now. we got to work with what we have. We don't need to go to the hospital. You don't know that. He's groggy. He's, he's post-ictal. Just like what happened the other time. That wasn't the same. He was fine in 10 minutes. He had a full workup. He stayed overnight. Spinal tap, CT. You're not being objective. They terrified him and they found nothing. It was nothing. Febrile seizures recur. The pediatrician warned us about it. What if this is different? If he is not better in 20 minutes, we'll take him in. We learn in this episode that she had previously been a doctor at the hospital affiliated with the University of Southern California. And as the patient of a mother at County General, however, she experienced firsthand the limited, strained, or non-existent resources at a teaching hospital that would prevent the diagnosis of the cause of her son's present state. It feels like his parents had had Daryl Banfield's full workup done at another hospital. This wasn't a case of County General's negligence. Rather, Dr. Mark Green, who has played in a cameo appearance in this 15th season by Anthony Edwards, was the doctor assigned to the Banfield boy. And so this is cast back to the season in which Green was battling cancer. And in this scene, he goes head-to-head with Bassett, who is doing her best Dr. Mama Grizzly. Pulse oxygen is 87. Daryl, honey, wake up and breathe for us. Six of automate, 30 of sucks. No, no two. He's just post it. Your son's vomited blood, and he's been altered for over My an hour. My son has a history of febrile seizures. A okay, seizure can't account for that. A Mallory Weiss tan, a typical presentation. Right. He's hypoventilating, and his brain needs oxygen. Why don't you check another agency? Listen, I need you to be the mom now, okay? And I'm going to be the doctor. It works best that way. 
is right. Where's the chief? Who's running the floor? I am. And I've been doing this job for a while, so you need to trust me. Claire? She should be warm enough now to respond to the shock. Claire! I don't understand this. Otoscope. Mr. Herrero, did you see her hit anything on the way down? Yo lo cabeza. No. No creo. On some rocks. Anything. Estaba muy agitada, así que le llevé a pasear. She was really cranky, so he took her out. Es mi culpa. Hice algo mal. He's asking if it's his fault. If he did something wrong. Cats. Dr. Banfield led the young girl's case with the whole flashback, guiding her actions and words. Viewers learned that young Daryl Banfield had a stroke caused by acute leukemia, undiagnosed even though he had been sent through a battery of tests. Had Dr. Banfield assumed that other physicians were as competent as she? Regardless of who was to blame for Daryl's deteriorating condition that day in County General's trauma room, Dr. Banfield carried many lessons in her heart. All right, point two of that being prepsomatropine. Let's keep neurosurge in the loop. You said he, you said this was a fever. You said he didn't need anything. Nine and nine out of a hundred times. Stop talking like a doctor. That's our son, damn it. Heart race down to 40, no pulse. Okay. Starting compressions. Is there any history of sickle cell in your family? Thalassemia? No. Can you think of any reason why your son had a stroke? No. Start atropine. Mark. They're waiting for you upstairs. A little busy here. Yeah, I can take over. It looks like you need a break. Any meds? No, he's, he's healthy. He doesn't take anything. Let's see if they can hold your chemo. Is it possible that he ingested something? Something from your medicine cabinet? Maybe it's an ingestion. She's up to 94 now. What medicines are in the house? Claire! Nothing, just ask Anything else, prescription meds, over the counter. Still defib. What, what, what does he take? Pills for blood pressure, card or something. Is there any way Valicio could have gotten no, into them? No, it has a childhood cap. Diltiazem, diltiazem. Very toxic in kids. Uh, Blanca, half a gram of calcium, IV push. I'll check trauma one. The lab says that specimen is hemo. The two incidents collided in Dr. Banfield's heart and in her head. This beautifully told story revealed her dignity, the weight her heart held every day, and why excellence remains a hallmark of her professional reputation. And Dr. Mark Green helped her see that in herself in his gentle, mortal way. Large myeloblast. No. 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 Yes, yes, sinus rhythm. Clear, clear. Oh, my God. We got a pulse. He's been down for almost an hour. Is she back? You got her back? His brain's been deprived of oxygen. Call surgery. We need to get her upstairs so we can close the chest. I'm going to stop now. You saved her. You saved her. Okay, listeners, run down the list in your head of any accomplished dramatic actresses, say ranging in the age of 40 to 55, who could have nailed this performance, this character, as well as Angela Bassett did. Bassett pulled off complexity and calm, self-discipline and sacrifice in a role that normally would have been reserved for a brooding man. But for a mother 
who is also an accomplished physician to have been so blind to her son's serious medical condition, who wouldn't live with a head and heart full of second guessing? How do you regain your own confidence? Aside from Dr. Mark Green, who we grew to respect and love over his 182 episodes, Bassett, as Banfield, was the most nuanced character on the show, or at least that's my opinion. These flashback sequences in a single story got us inside her head. And so Bassett's performances, all 21 of them, remember, the series featured nearly 5,000 performers, is a reminder why every once in a while, an Oscar nominee who stoops to do TV will find a role that is worthy of her talent. So it's the end of the episode. The young girl has been saved, and Banfield is just putting it all in perspective, and she walks into the doctor's lounge. Here's how she revealed some of her most private details to colleague Dr. Archie Morris. Remember how earlier in this installment I described Dr. Morris as the resident cut-up? He was a bit of a smarty pants, but he was also very genuine. Played by Scott Grimes, Dr. Morris often wore his feelings on his sleeve. The final gesture of this scene has Dr. Banfield pulling the girl's stuffed animal, which she had retrieved from the scene at the lake, and handing it to Morris. Those are the ones you never forget. I shouldn't be doing that. Keep a secret stash in the back of the fridge. Crack one open when something really amazing happens. In five years here, this is like the third one I've drunk. One beer every 20 months I can overlook. So, forgive me for noticing, but what happened in there? Something changed. Situation evolved. It was a kid, right? We all have one. Some case you blew, or patient you should have saved. Yours was a kid? Yeah. How old? He was five years old. Those are the worst. He was my son. He died here. In trauma one. Your son? died in this ER? And you're working here? I'm not sure why I've done anything I've done since that day. Why did I not leave my apartment for almost two years? Then I see the news about the tsunami. And I fly to a place 10,000 miles away. Why did I do that? But I come back. Why did my son have leukemia? Never understood any of it. I'm sorry for your for your loss. I I don't really know what to say. When your parents are gone, you're an orphan. The spouse dies, you're a widow or widower. But when you lose your baby, there's no word for that. See to it she gets this before you go. This entire episode also reminds us that we don't know everything about the people we work with or, frankly, are even close to knowing it all. In this age of Instagram and Facebook, not everybody in our circle wants to share every detail, happy or sad, in order to live for the reaction of others. And that in this lifetime, we may be fortunate to hold all sorts of titles spouse, sibling, child, parent, grandchild, or grandparent, but with those titles may come sacrifice and responsibility within the family unit, above and beyond that which is currently on our plates. Our hearts tell us these challenges are part of our purpose, and when that person no longer needs us, 
that relationship is a changed one. In some instances, to Dr. Banfield's point, the English language hasn't necessarily assigned a word for that new status. And this is a subtle theme throughout women's roles in TV, manifesting perhaps most frequently in daytime dramas, more so than on primetime. Advanced TV history puts Angela Bassett's performance at the top of the list for bringing so much of herself to this complex, wonderful character, and that the character and the writers took the time to get it right for women. Um, Angela, uh, Ms. Ms. Bassett, more, please, more on TV. Advanced TV Herstory thanks you for sticking with us through all the tough medicine included in this segment. Audio from Season 15, Episode 7, entitled Heal Thyself on, of ER, was pulled from the DVD, which you should buy, STAT. Stay in touch through a host of methods, like by emailing me at advancedtvherstory, all one word, at gmail.com. Follow the podcast on Twitter. Our handle is at tvherstory. Please leave feedback and ratings at the hosting sites Libsyn and iTunes. Listeners have great ideas and perspective, and it is a joy to hear from you. Um, So please, send me what you've got. And finally, find this script and past scripts at my website, CynthiaBemisAbrams.com, and find out there, too, how I can bring TV history themes to your team training or conference. Hey, you know what? Advanced TV history is nearing its first anniversary. It's been a terrific ride, so thanks for listening and for all of your encouragement. I'm your writer, researcher, producer, and host, Cynthia Bemis Abrams.